Okay, this presentation is done by Ivan Sanchez and Firas Al Musayabi. Uh, we talk about the electrical properties of the material. Uh, first, we're going to talk about how the electrical conductance and the resistance characteristic and uh, physical phenomena distinguish uh, between conductor, semiconductor, and insulator, and how the metal affects with uh, amplification, temperature, and deformation, and what's the difference between that uh, factors here and above with semiconductors, especially with uh, when we are doping impurities uh, versus temperature with that uh, uh, intrinsic and extrinsic uh, semiconductors. So our first law is called Ohm's law. It shows the relationship between the current and the resistance uh, and how that applies to the resistance. So first of all, we're going to see voltage equal uh, I, which is the current, times the resistance. The I represents the, the number of column charges pass through that unit, uh, time times unit. The resistivity is another concept, important concept. It shows the resistivity of each material and what's the geometry uh, factors effect on that resistivity. As you see from this equation here, the cross section area and uh, the length of the spice man, they are both have big effect on the resistivity of the material. As we have bigger cross section area and less uh, L, the length of the material, we're going to have less resistance. Conductivity is another important concept which shows the, uh, the, ratio, the how, how, how good the material in conducting the electrical uh, currents, which is equal the inverse relationship with resistivity. In this problem, we cover that in a class, uh, we show how this uh, uh, two spice man has different length and different cross section area uh, effect on the resistance. The two equations here is given. Uh, it shows uh, how to find out the resistance for R1 versus R2. The question is which one has more resistance? Of course, as we see from the green spice man, uh, the green one has bigger resistance. The reason why it has longer L and smaller cross sectional area than the blue spice man. In this case, we uh, can make it a comparison comparison with a water flow in the pipeline. Another important definition is the current density, which shows the relationship between the current and the cross section area uh, for the spice man. As we have bigger cross section area, we're going to have more current flux go through that spice man and another concept we go over, uh, go over go over it which is called electrical field potential which has big effect on the electronic flux the current density as we apply more electrical uh, field with good conductivity material we have more electrons current will flow through this uh, spice man. The best material we use it for conductivity is the metals because it has uh, higher conductivity and we're gonna all go over about it why it has better conductivity. Second one, second materials, it is semiconductor. Uh, we use typically silicon and germanium for the uh, conductivity and sensitive electronic devices. And how we're going to treat these materials, semiconductors, and which make it a high, higher efficient material for conducting current. A ceramic and polymer, there is less chance to use ceramic in our uh, conduction material because their conductivity is typically much lower than metals and semiconductors. While for polymer, as we see here, the conductivity is very uh, low and we need a lot big uh, excitement energy to excite the electrons from valence band to conduction band and while we apply this energy this polymer material might burn out before we reach to a conduction band 
as an example of the conductivity for this wire it's made from a copper which is what typical uh, wires made from copper it, it, we ask us to uh, find the minimum diameter for this wire if we have applied voltage less than 1.5 volt as we said in this problem typically we use Ohm's law voltage divided by the current and to find the resistance we have to know the length divided by cross-sectional area for that wire uh, times the uh, uh, divide by sorry divide by sigma the conductivity from uh, the table book textbook table we have the conductivity for the copper 6.07 times 10 to time uh, power 7 uh, so after we find the resistance we can find a cross section area by using this equation and the solution is 1.87 In all conductors, semiconductors, and many uh, insulator materials, only electronic uh, conduction exists. And the magnitude of the electrical conductivity is strong, depends on the number of electrons available to participate in the conduction uh, process. However, not all electrons in every atom accelerate in the presence of electrical field. The number of electrons available for electrical conduction in particular particular material is related to arrangement of electron states or level with respect to energy in the manner in which these states are occupied by electrons anyway the influence the influence in such that uh, distinct atomic this state may split into may split into a series of closely uh, spaced electron states in a solid to form what is termed electronic energy band. And this is schematic plot uh, which show uh, the electron energy versus interatomic separation for an aggregated of 12 atoms. Upon close approach, each of 1s, which is here, and 2s, which is in higher level, atomic state split to form an electron energy band consisting of 12 states this is another schematic which show the con conventional representation of electron energy band structure for a solid material at the equilibrium interatomic separation and for this part here on the right side the electron energy shows the electron energy versus interatomic separation for an aggregated of atoms illustrate how the energy band structure at equilibrium separation the energy gap typically is the energy required to excite the electrons from conduction band to uh, correction from valence band this guy here valence band to a conduction band typically in our materials we use as we said before metals for our conduction the reason why because their uh, gap energy interfere with uh, violence band and conduction band in which we, we need less excitement energy to excite our uh, conduction uh, cor correction to excite electrons and our uh, violence band towards the uh, conduction band anyway for this schematic it shows uh, there are two types of uh, band one called partially filled band which has some little of free band which need very little energy to excite it in the conduction band make the material ready to uh, conduct the electrical currents
Well, in second one, second schematic, which shows the free electron already been excited to uh, an empty spot in a, a conduction band. Now for the insulators and semiconductors, we have obvious uh, energy gap that make a space between the valence band and conduction band. In this case, we need higher excitement energy than metals to excite and free the electrons uh, from the valence band to uh, conduction band. So in increasing the temperature, of either the semiconductor of or an insulator result in an increase in the thermal energy that is available for electron uh, excitement. Therefore, more electrons are promoted in conduction band, which gives rise to enhanced conductivity. And these two schematics shows. Uh, an obvious energy gap between insulator and semiconductor. In semiconductor, there is less smaller energy gap than uh, insulator. In this case, for semiconductors, we need less than uh, two electron volt excitement energy to promote our electrons from the valence band to the conduction band to promote and get the current uh, charges flow through the spiceman. Well, here for insulator, we have we need higher energy gap uh, excitement energy to promote our electrons to conduction band, which typically is not possible to promote our current from the valence band to conduction band and insulator. The reason why the energy gap is too big uh, to excite our electrons and the material, insulator material, which is typically polymer, uh, will burn out before we reach to uh, free electrons, to liberate free electrons in conduction band. Anyway, there are many factors affect the resistivity of the material. Uh, one of these uh, factors called impurity or doping for the material, uh, for specif specifically for metals. And the reason why, as we uh, impure or doping the metals, we're going to make up uh, problems by generating grain boundaries, dislocations, uh, and more vacancies. And all these factors will affect and causing uh, a trouble, what we call it scattering mechanism. As we see here from this schematic, when we have pure copper, it has less resistivity, but when we make it any pure, add nickel, the more density of nickel we add to a copper, we have more resistivity, because uh, the four reasons here will cause this trouble, more resistivity. One is grain boundary, dislocation density, and the vacancies and uh, impurity materials, uh, sorry, impurity atoms, on all of these uh, will cause uh, uh, problems for letting current go through uh, more freely in the materials. In this equation here, what we name it math Hines rule, if I am saying it right, uh, which shows the relationship or the factor that affect the resistivity of the material specifically for the metals collection one called thermal problems the first problem which is caused by increasing the temperature increasing temperature in metals that will causing a vibration atomic vibration and atomic structure that will does not make the uh, electrons or charges to move freely in that spice man because that vibration Second one, the impurity, as we talked here. And third one, deformation. As we have more deformation, that will cause or increase 
the number of electron scattering locations. And this is schematic here, which shows how the uh, how the how how we excite our electrons from the valence band towards the conduction band. Typically, the electrons has negative charges, and they are located in conduction band. That's where the electrical current will move through the spice man. And another uh, method for conducting current, which is called hole, which is generated by uh, liberating electrons from uh, valence band towards electron band uh, that will cause a vacant electron state in the wireless band and usually the electron speed is much faster than the whole speed when we apply uh, electric field Typically in our applications, in semiconductor application, intrinsic, we use silicon and germanium. And they are another material we use as a semiconductor, but uh, more usually we use silicon and germanium for semiconductor uh, devices. The reason for that, they have wider electronegativity difference between the element, the wider the energy gap. As we see here from this schematic, this before we apply electric field, and after we apply electrical, electrical field, the electrons will go to opposite side of the electrical field, and holes will go towards the same direction of electric field. And the total movement of electrons and holes, we call that drift current. This will show the final result after we apply the electrical field where the electron go towards the positive direction of the applied voltage which is typically the direction of electric field opposite of direction direction of up, uh, electric field and holes go towards the negative side uh, voltage side towards the uh, electric field direction Here's an important equation to show the electrical conductivity. The total electrical conductivity for the semiconductor it depends on the density of number of, of free electrons in the conduction band per unit meter cube and uh, P represents the number of density holes per meter cube and the total of these two terms which is the mobility for electrons and mobility for holes will uh, make how good the, con the material semiconductor material for conduction current for intrinsic conductivity this terminology used that without doping the semiconductor it shows the relationship again between the density of electrons versus hole and again for intrinsic semiconductor we have number of hole equal number of holes and that makes sense because number of electrons that liberated become originally correction the number of holes generated here P it came originally from number of electrons liberated and excited to conduction band. And if P equal N, we're going to have this equation which is specific for uh, intrinsic conductivity. And this equation here, we ask us to find the density for number of electrons per unit volume after we apply this equation for GAAS the conductivity we have units for this specific material 10 to the power minus 6 and electron charge E 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 
and as we said before, the mobility for echitrons is higher than mobility of holes. After we apply this equation, we could find out the density for GAAS, and same thing we can use it for silicon. So, what is the relationship between the temperature and conductivity in semiconductor? For metals, the temperature makes the resistance or the receivity of material uh, higher, while or whereas for semiconductor, uh, the increasing temperature, while increasing the temperature, making the conductivity uh, better with less resistivity. The reason why this temperature T uh, will increase the number of liberated electrons, and which has an, exp uh, an exponential relationship as we increase the temperature we increase the uh, uh, number of concentration liberated uh, electrons. On the other hand, we have a terminology called extrinting, which is came originally by doping the materials, the uh, semiconductor materials, with another material which make the uh, uh, number of electrons in uh, valence band close to Fermi states level. In this case, while well, we have more electrons in, uh, in valence band close to, uh, closer to Fermi level energy, that make it easier and need less energy, excitement energy, to liberate more electrons uh, towards the conduction band. As we see here, we dope uh, this semiconductor material with phosphorus uh, atom. The phosphorus has, <coughs> the phosphorus has, excuse me, uh, five valence band and this valence band, uh, we have an extra electrons. So this electron will be closer to Fermi's energy level and make it easy to liberate this, much easier to liberate this electrons towards the conduction band and make the semiconductor higher efficient in conduction. Well, boron, we have uh, uh, in uh, P-type extrinsic uh, semiconductor, we have one empty spot, what we call it a hole. We can use this hole uh, for conduction, and uh, which is close, also close to Fermi level. And this hole will play a big role, and uh, for for conduction and semiconductor in higher efficiency. Again. To make our comparison between a drenching and extrinsic material in terms of the applied temperature. So for extrinsic, uh, it needs less temperature than intrinsic because again, because we dope it with uh, phosphorus in case we have N or a boron in case we have P type material. So this guy Extrinsic will need less excitement energy temperature to liberate our electrons towards the conduction band from valence band to conduction band. So in this case, for uh, doping doped silicon, uh, we have conductivity increase with doping. The reason why, as we said, as summary, because the amplification site lowers the activation energy to produce mobile electrons. As summary for our presentation for today, we have two very important terminology, one opposite each other has inverse relationship, one conductivity called, and the other one resistivity. 
uh, they are both depends on the material parameters which is in other words each material has their own uh, conductivity and resistivity other one the geometry specifically the length for the material and the cross section area we have three kind of uh, material in terms of conductivity one is conductor came from metals typically you use copper and aluminium for our conduction despite the fact that silver uh, is also the best one for conduction but we don't use it because it's expensive another one is semiconductor and insulator and we make a comparison between these two guys semiconductor and insulator and uh, we see uh, the energy gap uh, the difference between the energy gap between them For metals, the resistivity increase with the temperature because that will increase the atomic vibration that will impede the current flow uh, through the material. Also adding amplification because that will increase the number of grain boundary and dislocation density. And plastic deformation will cause also more Resistivity because increase the number of electron scattering dislocations for pure semiconductor we call the intrinsic uh, the conductivity is increase with the temperature as this temperature will liberate more electrons from the conduct from sorry from the valence band towards conduction band another kind of semiconductor. Uh, we call that extrinting by doping this material or semiconductor with boron for p type that will generate more holes than electrons and phosphorus for n type that will generate more electrons in comparison with uh, holes thank you we done Conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. The materials can be classified mainly in three sections, which are conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. Materials that allow electric charges to flow through them are known as electrical conductors. For example, silver and copper, graphite, solution of acids, solution of bases, solution of salts and for example a mercury vapor lamp. Materials that do not allow electric charges to flow through them are known as non-conductors or electrical insulators for example rubber, glass, plastics, wood or diamond. Material whose conductivity is less than that of the conductors and greater than that of the insulators are known as semiconductors for example silicon and germanium we have diamond and graphite which both are made out of carbon and yet they are different for example diamond has a structure such that each atom is bounded by four other atoms this makes all the covalent electrons to be used. Such arrangement makes diamond a good insulator because there are more free electrons that can move. Graphite has a structure with an atom bounded by three atoms, which leaves one covalence electron free to move. This is why graphite can conduct electricity. It may not be as good a conductor as copper, but that extra electron still can move since it's not attached to the structure. In the world of semiconductors, germanium and silicon are mainly used because their possibility to change the conductivity is very appreciated. People change the conductivity of these elements by adding impurities like beryllium and boron. 